Hello, you're watching the MLX200 Jogging and Teaching Tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be covering the basic functionality of the MLX200 Teach Screen. This will show how to jog the robot in various coordinate modes and also how to teach positions. Then, we will show how to link these teach points with a simple example application. Finally, we will show how to use the Teach Screen functionality to quickly and simply modify previously taught positions. Now you can see the MLX200 HMI in a simulation of an MH5S robot. To load the teach screen, the robot will first have to be set to the manual mode, which can be done by flipping the hardware key switch. Here we can see we are already in manual mode from the indicator on the top left of the HMI. The teach screen can now be accessed using the menu button on the bottom left. Let's talk a little bit about the overall layout of the teach screen. On the left, you will see controls for changing the jogging speed and coordinate modes for the robot. On the right, you will find buttons for moving the robot as well as indicators for the current TCP and axis positions. Finally, on the bottom, you can see controls for teaching points. Each of these components will be discussed as part of this video. Now the robot can be moved using the jog controls. Here you see by pressing, pressing the plus and minus C buttons, we can move the robot TCP in the Z direction or also in the Y direction, or in the X direction. To move in axis mode, we can switch the coordinate system to axis, and then each individual axis can be drawn. We can also change the jog speed, so if we move to inch, you will see that the robot moves very slowly. The other thing to note is that while the robot is moving, the TCP and axis indicators on the right of the HMI are constantly updating to show the current position of the robot. Finally, we can press the teach point button, and this will copy the current values into job zero, teach point one. So if I click teach point, and we come over here and look at the tag structures, you'll see that the job zero, teach point one, TCP, and access positions match what is on the HMI. If we look at the simple example program we have scheduled, you'll see that it first does an ax absolute axis motion to job 0, teach point 1, and then it does two linear motions to job 0, teach point 2, and job 0, teach point 3. So now switching back to the teach screen, we can teach these points. We've already taught the current position is job 0, teach point 1, so now we will move the robot to a new position to teach teach point 2. You'll notice when I press the teach position button, the teach point number automatically increments. And now we'll move the robot to a third position and teach teach point three. Now the teach points for that program have been taught and it can be executed. Now if we switch back to the main screen and change the mode back to automatic mode, we can press the start button and see the robot move through the positions that we just taught. On the teach screen, the jog to point button can be used to cycle through previously taught positions. You'll see when I hold the button down, it moves to the, current, the previously taught position and when it reaches it, the button changes to an indicator to indicate that you're at the position. So if I move to teach point two, I can jog to that position and then teach point three and also jog to that position. This provides a good way to verify previously taught positions and also an easy way to modify a, a position. So if I needed to reteach teach point three and I needed it to be further down, I could just move the robot and reteach the position. Now, when we press the start button from the main HMI, you will see that the robot now uses this new top position for teach point three. In this video, we have shown the basic functionality of the teach screen, how positions top from the HMI are linked to application code and ladder, and how to modify previously top positions. Thank you.